episode 136 of the wilderness podcast is brought to you by our patreon supporters support the show at patreon.com slash the wilderness podcast our supporter of the week is brian latwis we are also brought to you by audible quick disclaimer my microphone died pretty early on in this episode so if the audio quality is a little bit lower than usual that is why thank you Welcome to episode 136 of the Wilderness Podcast. I'm your host, Dills, and with me is Deegan. Hey, how's it going? So the topics of this week, some uh, PvP changes, and I don't know if it's an update, but information on the Dead Man Mode beta and the tournament that's just around the corner. And after probably a couple months now, but they're finally, they finally brought out another uh dev blog talking about the Forthos dungeon the dungeon that's going to be located at the uh in the Asidius house on Zaya. and as for community chatter well uh today marks a very special day in uh runescape history we'll talk about the events that took place this week or last week and lastly some drama between jagex and a uh, player moderator that's about it as far as news goes. Um, Deegan, what'd you do this week? Um, RuneScape related? Nothing. Nothing at all? No. Not even AFK skills? No. Oh, boy. No, no. Uh, yeah. No RuneScape stuff. Um, real life, nothing really to talk about. Well, actually, no, I got, um, I guess I got, like, a, what was it, two weeks ago? 99 Fishing? Yeah. So today I went out with a buddy and got some fishing gear. So I'm going to get RL99 fishing. <laughs> Sick. Yeah. So I got some fishing gear. A um, couple weeks from that now. We're going to go fishing. That's pretty much it, though. Not yeah. much going on this week. It's been really busy. Yeah. Slow week. Well, news wise, I guess. Yeah. Nothing really to talk about. True. What about you? Well, I ended up getting a second job. I'm talking about real life stuff, but I got a second job working for a, um, so I have my full-time job right now. That's just carrying over for the summer. It's, uh, I'm working at the radio station at my college over the, over the summer. And I also end up getting a, it's the entry level part-time position for a, um, just the, the, the big radio station in my city. So that's pretty exciting. It's, uh, it's, Position is a street team member, which just means you kind of go to the events and you do a bunch of you, you do. You just do a bunch of random stuff, I guess. Um, but we'll see where that goes. Besides that, uh, the girlfriend moved in this weekend, so that's been pretty busy there. Um, that's that's it for real life stuff, though. Video game wise, you know, playing some VR. That's still um, still I'm still having a lot of fun with that. Jamming like uh, Rec Room and Beat Saber and all that fun stuff. Having a lot of fun there, and as far as RuneScape goes, I've just been hopping on to do my uh, GE flips and and fishing. That's about it. Fishing. That's that's my life for the next little bit. So fishing on my main and my pure. My main's at what is it? Eighty nine fishing, probably about four hundred k away from ninety, and then my pure's sitting at I think it's sixty seven. So we're making some progress there. I want to get to. I'll probably switch over to sharks when I get to 76 fishing and then get that to 80 and then go over do the inferno eels. I'm just, I'm just fishing on my pier as a way to give like a, like a a method of AFK money making while I play my, my main. And I just don't want some, I want something that I can like pay little attention to as little as possible. And maybe I can make enough money to pay for, you know, maybe two bonds a month. Right. So I can start playing my account uh, and members for free, at least real life money wise. And then, um, same with my pure, but you know that's that's pretty much it. Um, I just I've seen some weird articles for video games. So have you ever heard of this? I don't know if it's a genre of games, but I just kind of was reading about it today. Auto chess. Well, and I know it's a, like a mod in Dota. Yeah. Okay. So it's something that looks like it's getting kind of popular. Yeah. It's um. I saw League of Legends is rolling out a game mode, which is basically this quote unquote auto chess. Which just seems kind of uh, kind of weird. Mm-hmm. So uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but it's just what chess. You set up your own unique pieces. Once you're done that, you just let them go, and then your an AI is playing for you. Um, I'm not really too sure. I haven't I haven't played it myself, but I know there's like 
types of monsters slash like heroes that you pick and then i don't know there's a really weird economy system that's like yeah i don't really know too much about it hmm bizarre but if this becomes a new trend because gaming these days seems to follow these weird trends do you think old school runescape would jump on board with a new mini game i don't know how old school could do it they always find a way you know they did that with the um the battle royale yeah. and they were an early adopter of it maybe a little bit too early because it um it died it died but we got a little bit of a resurgence so that's uh she's not completely dead but uh, yeah, no, I just I thought it was interesting. I just I hadn't heard of this auto chess thing. And apparently it's like this new type of genre of these like puzzle games sort of. Yeah. And uh, yeah, apparently it's kind of uh, I don't know, it's catching on a bit. A bunch of other games are starting to bring out game modes. There's other other completely standalone games that are doing their own version of auto chess, which is like, I don't know. You saw the same thing with the trading card games. Once Hearthstone started getting really popular. You know, Elder Scrolls came out with one eventually, right? Yeah. So it's, uh, I don't know, it's just this weird trend. I, I was surprised to see it because I was, like, kind of confused. Made me feel really old. It, you know, you're kind of losing touch with uh, the trends. Yeah, I'm not really sure where Auto Chess came from, but um, I see some streamers kind of, like, gravitate towards it now. A lot of, like, actually, like, the Hearthstone streamers and stuff. Oh. Huh. So, yeah, I don't really know too much about it, though. Neither do I. I just, yeah. Yeah, but anyways, that's that's basically all I saw that was going on this week outside of the news of RuneScape. So should we just hop right into it? Yep. Cool. Let's do it. Yeah, so we're starting off with some PvP changes and some Dead Man beta stuff. Kind of speaking on trends, Last Man Standing is a little change. Oh, boy. So you only need four people to make a game. Compared to what, 25 before? Yeah, before it was it used to be 24. Jesus. And the competitive high stake games now begin with 24 instead of 48. Jeez. Yeah. So maybe Last Man Standing might be a little bit more popular, but. Well, now that you only need four people, that's at least you can get your own little private games going. Yeah. I know we were trying to do in the CC and we had like eight people show up and we're like, well. Yeah, it's a nice group, but you're like, we still need like. 18 more or mm-hmm. whatever math. Yeah. Um, so with they changed the way like unsculling worked. So players were previously able to unscull at a, like quick accessible activities and then re-engage with the opponents with like no risk. So things like Nightmare Zone and Clan Wars were used, Duel Arena. Yeah. They removed the ability to do all that. Teleblock and free to play. So to encourage trying out PvP, free to play players now have access to Teleblock. Ooh, is that controversial? They pulled it, what, three times and it failed? Yeah. And now they just throw it right in without a pull. Yeah. I mean, I don't have a problem with this update specifically, but could this be a snowball? Could this get out of control? No, I mean, it's kind of dumb that it didn't pass. Yeah, that's the one thing. That's the one update that I, was, I never understood why it didn't pass. Yeah, made me like feel like. Something was going on behind the scenes. Like, there was some community trying to, like, I don't know, maybe them Venezuelans. <laughs> but it kind of enforced the whole uh, PVM versus PVP, you know, like the separated community there. Yep. So, inboxes were previously used to quickly bank items before being killed on PVP worlds and in the wilderness. To prevent this method of avoiding risk, inboxes no longer work in PVP. I have like 200 inboxes in the bank I got to drop now. <laughs> Fun fact. When are you going to use this? I guess you could still use black it for black chins. Yeah, black chins, right? Well, you can't use it for black chins. You have to be really quickly as soon as you get tagged. Oh, wait, you can't even do it in PvP areas. You just... Yeah. That's stupid. Mm-hmm. That was the only use it ever had. That and Arceus Library, but they made it so you can't bank. So inboxes are, like, useless now? Yeah. Yeah. It's the way she goes sometimes. Yeah. Maybe they'll find another use for it. Maybe they'll just phase it out in general. Yeah, who knows? Yeah, and they made a uh, change to the max cape. So if you're killed in the wilderness with the max cape, you'll now drop, I guess, 570k? Yeah, and it used to be it looked like 12,000. Yeah. So it's a huge jump up. Hmm. But even the uh, 570,000 GP 
still only 25% of the max capes cost, right? Yep. 2.2 mil. The Vengeance spell no longer disrupts the player's walk animation unless they're already in a PvP area when they cast it. Oh. It's to prevent lures and I guess like rushing, like a weird safe method of rushing, a safer. But you can still kind of um you can you can do the animation stall in a PvP zone, but I guess you can't be in a bank, cast vengeance and then run out like a PvP world and spec someone. Okay. Seems fair to me. Seems fair. Yeah, moving on to the Dead Man Spring stuff. The finals rerun. So the rerun will occur on the 14th of June. It's a Friday. Invited players will be able to log on at 17 BST. So it's 5 BST. 5 p.m., yeah. Yeah. And the permadeath stage will begin three hours afterwards at 8. Nice. So hopefully eight, not like two AM, right? Yeah. PvP will not be enabled until the beginning of the permadeath stage. So you have three hours to do what you want, including questing, getting piety. Okay, interesting. The fuck? It's weird. What's the point of this? Maybe it's just that every player isn't cookie cutter. You know what I mean? You got some guys who might have a different weapon that's not in the uh the set they give you doesn't really make sense to me, but I don't know. I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't really see the harm in it, I guess. It just seems pointless. I really want to go off on this, but I don't care enough about dead man mode anymore <laughs> because it's a finals rerun and they're kind of moving away from dead man mode, it seems. But I'm going to go off on it a little bit. What's what's the point of this? Why are we doing this? Why not just do a final hour? Maybe. It's for some of the streamers because people might love to watch that final day of prepping of three hours of doing quests. Yeah. So it gives some of those streamers an extra three hours of like rushing to make their account as soon as possible. From my understanding, if I have to assume everything, it'd be like, you know, when they did the quote unquote restart. Yeah. They what gave everyone base 90s. I got kicked out and stuff like that. Something like that. Um, I feel like it's going to be that and then three hours to kind of go from there. But the three hour, it's it's going to be all up to RNG. You're going to quickly get piety. You already have ancients. Um, and then you're going to go sit in the wilderness and try and get PVP items. As much as I hate clan man mode, like what's what's the point of like any of this? Why not just give everyone max everything and then just have a final hour? Well, this does let some people to to kind of come up with a strategy, right? But all the strategies locked behind RNG. You have three hours to snipe an item. Some RNG and some quests, like um. Well, the only quest worth doing is piety because you already have ancients. You're already gonna have uh, vengeance, I believe. I could be wrong on that, but like, it, like it's it, if they're doing the, the the baseline thing that they did for like their temporary fix, everything like valuable. You're already going to have. So like the only thing I think of is like niche supplies and piety and a competent player with the stats that like I'm assuming everyone will have will be able to get piety and stuff in like 30, 40 minutes because the, all the prereqs are done. It's like Shiloh Village and then guess yeah, that's a lie. Maybe not all the, but the Shiloh Village and the like King's Ransom stuff. Which you probably get done like an hour. Yeah. But like if there's no PvP element to a PvP based final, like, you know what I mean? It's like just just do one hour. Just have the final hour. But I think they're worried that if they just did the final hour, everyone's going to have everyone has the same setup. You're going to be watching an RNG, although it will boil down to more skill. That's one positive way to look at it, right? This is like clans will have people locking down every pvp monster for vestas and stuff yeah and while the main guys go and to do the quests with everyone else to have to do the quest and then you just go and fight like are you gonna go kill like black dragons and hope for a, a visage yeah I, I honestly i'm not too sure it's almost i don't know i feel like watching it you might be like oh that's why they did it but at the same time i don't know man like i think we'd have to talk to someone in the dead men mode scene because they might they, I don't know. They might say, like, that's the most exciting part is, like, the day before. And, unfortunately, we're squishing it down to three hours. 
I, I have no idea though, because it does seem a little bit pointless. And um, yeah, three hours isn't that much time to do much. Yeah. Well, I guess we'll have to wait and see. Yeah. It does seem like Dead Man. You don't hear as much about it, right? Normally, you'd see something like this would pop up. You'd have a lot more discussion. Seems like there's a lot of people are kind of just like tired of it. Like, I still enjoy watching it, but I mean, I guess I can kind of get I don't get as hyped up. Well, this I, I just like now I'm like, do I, I'm going to watch it because I kind of have to. But <laughs> if I didn't have to, you know what I mean? If I was yeah. a casual person, just like. Why? It's easy to ignore it. Yeah. Seems more detrimental for the advertising purposes. You know what I mean? <laughs> Anyways, though. It'll be live on twitch.tv slash Deegan RS. No, I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> old school RS starting at 8 BST. And yeah, all that good stuff. The prize money will be 20,000 in first place, 10,000 a second, third and fourth get 1,000, fifth to 16th get 12 months of membership. Hmm. Lots of prizes at least. Yep. I mean, yeah. So the for the permadeath beta they're gonna have a another beta for friday 7th of june and yeah you'll be able to do a little beta test nice hopefully catch any of those bugs Mm -hmm. for mobile players free players tapping on a member skill on the stat interface will no longer randomly stop you from skilling actions so if you're woodcutting you accidentally like want to see your woodcutting experience and you misclick Mm. yeah the mobile apps icon that shows the app to be using the mobile data rather than your Wi-Fi has been changed. The previous picture of a smartphone was unclear, and the new icon will be more consistent with the Wi-Fi indicator. Okay. And I guess talk about the uh, the Forthos dungeon. Right. That um that very weird dungeon, but it doesn't look bad. It just uh random. It just seems random, right? Yeah. And when we first were talking about this, just looking at it, it seems very Dungeons and Dragons inspired. Yeah. Which I'm all for, right? Yep. So they have an image kind of shows where like all like I kind of wish they didn't have an image to show you where everything is and how to get to the dungeon. Yeah. Kind of ruins the whole fun of it. I find that's a problem with these like dev blogs and them having to be very like they have to thoroughly explain their updates so that we know what we're voting on. I feel like we lose a lot of the the surprise, the excitement, you know? Yeah. I mean, that's what was cool about Theater of Blood and um, the Inferno and stuff. A lot of it was hidden, like the skill required for the bosses. But, you know, we knew we knew what they looked like. We knew the items that were going to like the rewards. Yeah, it does. It does kind of bother me that we have too much information for something. I'd be like a really cool dungeon crawl. Something that would be exciting to stumble upon. Mm hmm. I guess if you're like a casual player, um, like you're like a low level, this kind of seems like it's meant for like lower levels. I can't imagine like want to do four of those runs. Yeah. Um, yeah. They're going to stumble upon it and have like a cool little adventure. Like, we'll, we'll get, definitely going to get into it, obviously, but um, it does seem like lower levels, but also Iron Men, right? Yeah. Like, it's not going to be a, a useless dungeon. It will get some use. Yeah. So, what is in it? Well, the f- one of the first rooms we'll talk about is the Spider's Den. It's a large den. It's a multi-combat red spider nest. It's got 21 temple spiders, and they're the most powerful red spiders in the game, like level 75. It's got an improved loot table, and Konar can't assign them. Can. Yep. Nice. M- maybe nice, depending on how pain in the ass the dungeon is. Yep. There's an abundance of red spider egg spawns. So. Perfect. Yeah. In the room to the south, you'll find an injured Ceridomus monk called Brother Amory? 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 Sure. I don't know. Once fully, but yeah, once they're fully healed, we'll give valuable, valuable information about the dungeon. See, that's something they should have kept a secret. I love yep. little Easter eggs like that. But they didn't. But, yeah. It's okay. We'll forget. Yeah. The uh, the next thing to talk about is the grubby chest. So at the end of a long corridor is a locked gate that can be picked 
with 57 thieving, and behind that door is a grubby chest requiring a key to unlock it. The keys will be uncommonly dropped by creatures throughout the dungeon, and the chest contains an assortment of supplies averaging 40 to 50 kgp. Nice. And they'll help you survive the dungeon. Kind of like a muddy key and the muddy chest in the wildy. Right. Yeah, do you ever use lava maze? Do you ever use that? Um, I did when I was a low level. Cause I, the thing is, I know you can buy the keys, right? Yeah, the keys are tradable and they're worth three point two k each. Um, it's about yeah, three k. And it seems like the chest gives you an average of four point five k. Money making guide. Yes, there's one point two k per key. Uh, not worth it. It's it's pretty damn deep. Most of it's runes, right? Yeah, uncut ruby, mithril bar, mithril dagger, anchovy pizza, law runes, death runes, and chaos runes. You get those every time. Okay. So it's not even like like the crystal um the crystal mm-hmm. chest where it's like you could get rune plate legs or you could get runeite bars or you can get just you can get nothing. Well, besides the drake. Yeah, spinach. Yeah. This one's every time. They should update this one, because I like these chests. They're kind of cool. And when I stumbled across this chest, I was like, oh. And like I'm talking about like two years ago. I was like, wow, I didn't even realize this thing existed. Or I forgot. Yeah. I looked it up, and I was like, oh, this is cool, but nothing really worth going for. They should update it a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, so the next thing to talk about is the library. So north of the grubby chest is a library, and this room contains four undead druids and various bookshelves. That can be searched for three tattered tomes. These pages, the pages to fill these tomes can be found by killing the creatures within the dungeon. And once filled, these tomes will describe snippets of lore about the ancient religion practiced in the southern kingdom of Varlamore. Ooh. Yeah, as well as information about the ruined temple itself. Doing so is part of a mini quest that we'll talk about later on. Again, I think it would have been a good idea just to not say anything about the tattered pages. Mm -hmm. How cool would it be if you killed something, you got the tattered pages, and now you're like, what the hell am I supposed to do with this? It's like with the, um, in that ancient caverns where, um, you know, the, the, the mithril dragons are by a barbarian outpost. Yep. There's like the, uh, what is it? The scorched paper or something like that. Scorched pages. And you, there's a bunch of them. You can make a whole book of them. And I honestly, I have no idea what they're for, but I collect them because I'm like, oh, this is going to be cool. Even though I haven't even looked it up, though, because mm. I kind of wanted to keep it like a secret. I know if I look it up, it's going to be you. You make a book that's all about the lore. And I'm like, well, shit, that's pointless. Yeah, I don't need to take up like seven spaces in my inv- in my uh, my bank inventory just to hold these pages. Just read the wiki. Yep, so the next thing to talk about is Altar of the Sun. This room contains a mysterious NPC named Albertus, who has found a curious artifact and an altar for charging prayer points. Cool, interesting. Mm -hmm. See, I like that. They didn't say too much, right? Mm -hmm. I feel like there's stuff to discover there. Next room is the Sacrificial Chamber. The small secret room was used by the Druids to present their offerings to the gods. Adventurers will have to explore the dungeon and figure out how to access the secret entrance from within the crypt of the moon. Once in there, a lever can be pulled, which will open a previously locked door north of the Scorch Grotto. Cool. Yeah. So he who should not be should not be named. How do you say that guy that guy's name? Eoden? Wait, where Eoden? Eoden the Tanner. I don't know. Is that his name? No idea. <laughs> Eoden the Tanner, I guess. Alright has set up a small tanning stall in this chamber. While useful, he charges a far higher price than other tanners. However, however, this cost can be reduced by completing tiers of the Karen and Cable's Achievement Diary. In the center of the room is a bone burner, which can be used to sacrifice bones three times the base experience of burying them. So it's not quite the Gilded Altar experience, because that's 3.5, right? Okay. I, that's what I'm... Okay, let me look, a, look it up real quick. Yeah, yeah, so the Gilded Altar gives you 3.5 times experience, so this is just three times. Yep. Players who appease the gods by burning enough bones here will earn the Temple Key. 
This can be used to permanently unlock doors in the dungeon to make traversing it much easier. This is designed to give extra value to anyone slaying the nearby red dragons without com- competing directly with the existent prayer experience raids from the Ectofunctus and the Guild Altar or Chaos Altar. Cool. That's um, it's a cool room. Yeah. You can just kind of, you know, hold yourself up there for, I don't know, however long until you run out of money, I guess. Yeah. The Scourge Grotto, which is the room that contains six red dragons and five baby red dragons. The west entrance leads to the library, while the north lies the shortcut to the northern half of the dungeon, requiring 75 agility to navigate. There's also a corridor to the northwest that leads to the sacrificial chamber, but the door needs to be unlocked from the other side. This location will be added to Conar's list of potential assignments for slaying red dragons. Nice. Yep. Undead druids found within a number of rooms in the dungeon. They're level 105. They're versions of a Chaos Druid and like other creatures in this dungeon. Konar can assign them. Undead Druids will feature a stronger loot than, you know, typical Chaos Druids, but won't provide as many herbs as Aberrant Specters. Nice, that's pretty uh, that's pretty cool. Chaos Druids are a throwback to when I was like a lower level. Mm-hmm. Now, it does say Konar can assign this as a Slayer task, but I wouldn't mind getting a Slayer task from other people that it was like... You know, Chaos Druids. And then this gives you an alternative, right? Yep. So you're not level 100 killing, I don't know, level 13 monsters. Now you can go kill monsters that are up, like more up your alley, giving you better experience and whatnot. Yeah. So the mini game, or the mini quest that we kind of just teased about a little bit ago is In Search of Knowledge, the Tattered Tomes. Ooh. A new mini quest called In Search of Knowledge will be introduced in the dungeon, and once you heal the, the Ceredoman priest, you know, tells you what the Tatter Tomes was in the dungeon of the library. You um you fill them with the four pages that are uncommonly dropped. You hand them into the Arceus library, and you get information regarding a hidden burial chamber in the chamber. Now home to Sarkinus. Sarachnus. Sarachnus, yeah. I have no idea. <laughs> yeah, Sarachnus is probably it. The mother of temple spiders. Nice. So the image they have is a work in progress, but it does. Looks cool. Looks pretty like RuneScape 3, but whatever. Oh, you um, think so? Really? Yeah. I think it looks like a spider boss. I don't know. It's, it's what I would expect from a spider boss in old school RuneScape. Strachnus is a brand new mid-level boss unlocked by handing in all of three tomes. She's aimed at players around level 100 combat who want to try their hand at bossing. At this level, players often try Giant Mole, KVD, or Barrows. However, learning these, uh, the learning curve from these boss to high-end PVM challenges such as raids is incredibly steep, so to fill this gap, they offer a chance to learn to deal with various combat mechanics. Nice. So, that's, a, that's a good idea, because, yeah, we've talked about it before, where, like, it's weird that you go from KVD, or even the Calphite Queen, where it's a hard boss, it's kind of hard to solo, but there's no mechanics. It's just because it hits so hard. And then you look at Zalra, which is like the exact opposite. Yeah. So the only reward they kind of tell us about is a unique item, a giant egg sack, which can be cut open for a large number of eggs, red spider eggs. So currently these are usually obtained from Nightmare Zone or the Tower of Life. And this new boss offers a more fitting, engaging way of acquiring this resource. The number of eggs a player can obtain per hour will be comparable to the Tower of Life, and it's intended to make up for removing red spider eggs from Nightmare Zone. Cool. That's a, that's good. Yep. That seems like a good change. For mid players, we expect gold per hour rates to be competitive with Barrows, and high level players can make more scaling with their ability to kill a boss faster. Similar reclaim system to other instance bosses like Vorkath. There's a chest, you die, 50k reclaim fee. Yeah. yeah. Um, Not a huge fan of that trend, but I mean, you gotta p- get punished somehow for dying. That's all they have right now, right? Yeah. At least until they change the uh, death mechanics. Yep. For um, people on their Slayer task, this will count as both spiders and temple spider tasks. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty much it. And then they have like all these things that'll be a poll question. Should they add the dungeon? 
should they add the um the like the bone burning aspect? Mm-hmm. And should they add Seracnus? Nice and simple seems like a uh I don't I don't know how this could be a problem, <laughs> you know? It seems like pretty tame. I mean it's not gonna be something that we're gonna be super excited for, but it's cool that, you know, somebody wants to get into PVM. They now have an option that's gonna be a little bit more tough than KVD. Yeah. What are your thoughts on it? Um, they don't really talk about the loot or the mechanics, but, and like, I don't know. I, I never really did barrels to make money. So I don't know if you do like three, 400 kills, what the average would be for the average person. And I don't win. The, and then also like, are they like, do the, these people have the more Tanya hards or elites or anything done like that? Mm-hmm. Um, should be comparable in the fact that like someone who's doing barrows for money, like if it's a good money maker for them, they're probably a low level, probably using like an Ivan staff. Well, it's geared for level one hundreds. Yeah. Uh, then when we get to like level, you know, like you and I, we're probably going there with full graceful. We're bringing. You but know, if, if you're level one hundred, you're using like tridents and stuff. You're not going to be using Ivans at level one hundred. Well, it depends on, on like how much money you actually have, I guess. But uh, yeah, if you can afford it, you'll be using the Trident and whatnot. But at level one hundred, I, you know, you're probably not rocking full graceful and just doing speed runs, right? Yeah, hundred percent, you can. Mm. Uh, well, well, then it's yeah, then it'll be like uh, I don't know. Yeah, that's pretty much it for the updates, though. Pretty light this week. Yeah, pretty light. That's a uh, yeah, some fun stuff. Uh, community chatter, I guess. First things first. This week, we celebrate the anniversary of a special event. The Falador Massacre took place June 6th, 2006. Probably one of the most iconic events that's ever happened, eh? Yeah. It's, uh, I don't know. I See, like, Jagex used to do a fun event every year to celebrate this. Mm-hmm. Well, at least they did it for a, a year, and RuneScape 3 did as well. And then they just stopped, and I'm not really sure why, but I know... Two or three years ago, they had the event where they would have an NPC named Duriel who'd be walking around Falador, and he had, like, a billion HP. And um, he had his green party hat. And you had to go to this separate world. So it's like this. You're not playing on your main account. You're playing on your account, and it's, like, fully maxed out already. And it's all PvP zones. So you could fight each other, or you could fight him. And it was pretty cool. Really hard to kill, but whoever killed it could wear the green party hat, and that's how you knew that they killed him, you know? Yeah. Did you ever do that event? Um, I was there. Like, I played around on it, but I didn't, like, really do much. Just kind of like, oh, this is fun. All right, back back to playing RuneScape. Yeah, it was, a, it was a pretty fun little thing. It wasn't anything crazy, and I wouldn't say people are missing it, but it was just, it was a nice gesture, I guess. Yeah. And it does seem that as, like, the, it seems... For old school RuneScape, they're doing less and less of those. And they did have that poll on how much time they want to do we want them to focus on it. But, you know, it's two years now. They haven't done an April Fool's event, right? Yeah. Two or three years since, you know, the Falador Massacre event. Well, didn't we vote on not doing those types of things? Yeah, like, like I said, they had that poll where it's like, how much time should we spend on it? And it was kind of like, spend a minimal amount of time. And I guess they just decide, okay, scrap these type of things then, right? Yeah. Which kind of sucks because they were always, it was fun. It kind of, um, I don't know, it just it just felt like that they were more passionate about it because they were doing these little events that were only going to last a couple days. Yeah. And then just get completely wiped. Or even the um, the April Fool's event, they, they were doing in-game events and then they did like a, a dev blog. And then, yeah, then this year they did nothing, which was uh, I was surprised about. Yeah. Because they always did something fun, but I don't know. Yeah. Anyways, Falador Massacre, this dude bugged out the game basically and was able to PvP in a non-PvP area. I, I'd be surprised if nobody is, is aware of this, but you can go watch a video and whatnot. I just Google Falador Massacre. Go oh, yeah. YouTube. Big. I guess I can I'll segue this to the other community chatter thing that I saw going and might be able to tie it in, but a uh, a, pl- a player mod end up getting his status revoked for because they called out Jagex on um on their support system. So in the, they they removed his uh his P mod status because of that. So it's a 
a bit controversial, I guess. Um, in a, I don't know. In my opinion, think? they blew like like they. This is way blown out of proportion by who? The community. Yeah. So you think it's like just to like lose a player mod status? Because this is what he had said. He just made a tweet saying. So there's a player who had been trying to contact the Jagex support team because his account was being hacked, and um, they basically just told him to, like, secure it with authenticators and whatnot, even yeah. though the guy was trying to say, like, yo, lock my account. So then this PMod made a tweet saying, this guy has reached out to you guys, and you basically showed him the middle finger. So that was the tweet that that got him to lose it. There was an instance back in October where he was trolling. He was, like, kind of playfully trolling um, new players when mobile was released. Okay. And then that's when Jagex had first talked with him about it. Um, What's playfully trolling? He was turning into... So it says here he was turning into... Um, using the ring of coins to turn into a stack of coins. And okay. tricking players. I don't know if that means tricking them at like Dark Mages or something. Or if he was just yeah popping it at the GE. Now is he saying that's what he was doing? Well he had posted a picture... And then Jagex had told him, like, yo, that's not cool. If you want to keep your PMOD status, you have to remove the picture. So he removed it, and then they left, let him keep it. And this instance here is where he lost it. So it, it honestly, he was probably trolling people at the Dark Wizards. Possible. You, you shouldn't be doing that as, like, a PMOD. Yeah. Um, I'm going to assume, because, like, how would you get in trouble, like, if you're at the GE... Yeah, that's that's what I'm like. The yeah. only reason why it wouldn't be OK is if you're trying to get players killed or like griefing. Yeah. And you sh- shouldn't do that as a player moderator, especially people that are trying out the game for the first time. And don't understand how death mechanics work and all that. Yeah, definitely. I used to like really before, like like before, like always be like, yeah, Jagex support system. Like, it does suck. It's not like the best, but everyone's so dishonest about how their accounts are like, oh, my account was unhackable. That's a big and then problem. You always find out that, like, oh, no, actually, you didn't have basic account security. I remember the Iron Man that made a big deal about getting hacked. And then you find out he didn't have a two step or a bank pin. And we, people found out because he, scre- he, he did a screenshot of his bank and he didn't have max bank capacity. Is that the dude who lost like bills? Yeah. So that's fine. He wasn't. I think I remember this one. It wasn't an Iron Man, and so this is where things get get weird. It's not super black and white, but turned out he was one of the 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 victims to mod Jed. Doesn't matter. But like there that, are that, tons of dishonesty. Anomaly. That that's that's like okay, yeah, you get hacked by mod Jed. That still isn't like a player support issue. That's like someone going rogue. Yeah, which doesn't matter. You can have the best. Like if you have someone on the inside, literally targeting your account <laughs> like that's on jagex i'm not gonna defend that but like even like with my my buddy that got hacked recently i would he was telling me how he was using his, like an old hotmail account right yeah and i was like dude set up a separate g and I, I said this to him word for word because i tell everyone to do this set your runescape password to a completely unique password that is not related to anything you don't use this password anywhere else. It's a random, special password. You should do that for everything, but people are lazy. But you know what I mean? Yeah. Everyone uses two passwords. Maybe don't. they'll put a capital sometimes. <laughs> yeah. Add a one at the end of it. And then, hey, don't use an a, an email that's like 12 years old. It's been leaked through 30 databases. And I remember telling him to set the account. Special email only, only the, the only have ever used on your RuneScape account. Make a Gmail. Make sure that's two stepped because your email has to be two stepped, and then have another separate password. Like I, I do, like you know, I'll have some lazy stuff where like things that share passwords. One of them's like my email and RuneScape, and then like banking stuff, right? Yeah, like important stuff. It's all like well, important, yeah. RuneScape and banking. Hell yeah. Um, I mean, your account's probably worth a couple thousand, right? No. With all the money, if you real world trade it? Oh, no. Okay, well, whatever. No. Would have been more exciting if you just played along. Oh, no. My, my, my <laughs> account's definitely not worth that much. Not a thousand, eh? No. Oh. Especially the PVM. Like, Tebow, I thought they were going for like a couple hundred. Like 
five, six. Maybe like five hundred bucks. That's like my like it's my bank. Okay, fair enough. Anyways, yeah, yeah. Um, because it's like a bill now. It dropped a lot. I lost like five hundred mil getting ninety nine fishing. Oh right, right, right. Yeah, like all my where all my money is, it's all dipped. Um, <laughs> and I tell them like, yeah, sp- special unique passwords. Don't share anything. Have everything two stepped. He ends up getting hacked, and I'm like, dude, what the fuck? Like. That's actually like that makes no sense. And he's like, dude, I did everything you said. I'm like, okay, so tell me, what do you have? And he's like, I have a password in my account. I'm two stepped. Like I have a two step authenticator. And then I have my Gmail. I'm like, is your Gmail two stepped? No. Are you using unique passwords? Well, no, it's the same password for both of them. Okay. You use that password for like anything else? Yeah. He's like, well, like, what the fuck? Like, yeah. Then why did you change your like that does nothing like you're you're like you're opening yourself up to like like dude come on like you know what I mean a lot of people like just do dumb stuff like that and it's like, like I started using a password manager it, it can be a pain in the ass especially if you're playing mobile but if you're just playing on the computer it's pretty great it's just this like program I keep it on a USB stick it basically like encrypts all your passwords so like they're super complicated they're, like thirty you know, characters long, capitals, lowercase. And it just, you press one button and it'll throw it all in there for you. So you could use that. The only problem is, like I said, if you're on mobile, you gotta like pull it up, look at it manually, and it's gonna be a pain in the ass to enter. Yeah. It's a few times I have to do that. Pain in the ass. But it, you know, yeah. super safe. I, the one I use is called uh, the Key Pass 2. Yeah, Key Pass 2. Um, but yeah, anyways, moving on from that though. Like, Jagex just released a poll blog on how they're fixing their support. Yeah. So, like, like what's the point of, like, bitch? Like, it's, it's so stupid. Like, I feel like this guy was, like, doing some dumb stuff, was about to be demodded anyways, and was like, I'm going to just get some Twitter followers out of this. Yeah, that's the thing. And like, everyone's eating it up. It's like, man, they literally said they were, like, they just released a, a poll blog or not, not pull blog, like a support, like, like a transparency blog. Like, they're like, this is what we're doing to improve our support system. And this is how we're going to do this and that. And then it's like a week later, like, you guys suck. It's like, oh, yeah, we kind of just acknowledge that. And we're, they kind of just explained how we're going to fix it. Mm-hmm. Like, like, yeah, like, come it's a on. large, it's a large process. And they straight up said, like, hey, we're, basically on what windows 98 yeah of customer service whereas everyone else is on like you know windows 10 yeah it just comes off as like the community and that guy just being really immature and like just wanting to bitch and moan about something yeah it's, it's ironically coming for me keep that in mind <laughs> that's saying something yeah then, right? but it did just have me thinking that like Mod Mac K recently left the team. Mod Aiza left the team, uh, and those are just like the two right off the top of my head. Right off the top of my head, and I like I don't doubt that those two truly cared about the game, and I think the whole team truly cares about the game as well. But I do think there's only a handful that are like really keeping everything together. Does that make sense? Kind of. Like I feel like you lose Mod Ash, you lose Mod Kieran. You lose, I don't know, Mod Ed. He's another one that comes to mind that, like, I feel like genuinely cares about it. Like I said, I think everyone does care about it. But you lose the people who care about it, like, for what it is and, like, their their vision of the game. You lose a couple people. I feel like it could easily change the direction the game is going. Yeah, well, I think every J-Mod, like, they don't make, like, they could be making way better money. Yeah. Um, if they're not working on old school, like they're taking a hit. And I think everyone that like works at old school is like pretty passionate about it. Um, but do you get the feel that like you could lose a couple people and then it wouldn't take much more to ch- change the direction of the game, even though they all care about the game? Well, the but direction is based on the community. That's the thing. A bit of the community, but like it's it's kind of like the, the J mods open the door and then we choose whether or not we go through it, you know? Yeah. Uh, it's just something I was thinking about, especially with the whole, you know, Fally Massacre and getting no event there. I'm starting to like... But that that was like from the community. Yeah. 
So like, what if the community is like changed, and but like, the J mods are now like? But why would the J? Why would the old school team even pull that to begin with? Right? Because the community freaked out about like the pace and what content they were delivering at the time, and they were like, okay. Let's assess this. And that's when they did the whole team restructure, like how they like structure, yeah, like their updates. And then they ask, like, how do you want us to focus? Like a lot of it is like, I feel like the community is just kind of wearing out people. And then at one like like if I'm Mod Mad K, I got kids and a wife. Other hobbies. <laughs> but like he's been he was with RuneScape for like 14 years, right? Yeah. And then at what point is it like should like what if he just was able to get a way better job like imagine like you want to provide for your family as best as you can and then you're like doing all this for like your passion and for the community and then you're kind of realizing that like huh this isn't giving me the value that it used to yeah and maybe other j mods are like kind of like getting that could be. That's why my mod Aiza left, right? Well, he's commuting like three hours, Airbnbs, and yeah. it's like at what point? It's like you have to like consider those people. Like, like they have lives outside of the community and like dreams, aspirations, like just like personal goals and stuff that mm-hmm. like that they've probably put on hold for like a game. Yeah, especially if they're not making the money they could be making somewhere else. Yeah, that's the big one. And you hear all the time if you're a developer for the game kind of career suicide because now you have to learn this coding language that no one's using yeah rune script or something like that like no one outside of runescape uses that i don't even think you could go over to the runescape 3 team you'd probably have to learn a variation of that yeah rune script 3 i don't know it's just something i was thinking about and uh yeah you I, it's it's not that the turnover is more apparent it's just that there's a bigger team or i should say since there is a bigger team you're seeing more people like leave and come out and join. And that's just what's going to happen going forward. But something to think about, I guess. Right. Yeah. I don't know. But besides that, that's all I saw going on with the community this week. Yeah. And normally this is the segment where we go and teleport back in time to 2001, where we discuss what happened this week during that year. Fortunately, nothing happened, but there will be some news next week on that one. Again, about the lore we're gonna be putting that one on hold you can probably tell right now it sounds like there's like a hurricane going on behind us mike's going mike's getting a little screwy i gotta figure out what's going on there and get it all fixed up for next episode so we'll come back and revisit all that next week which means we're gonna take a stroll over to that grand exchange and tell you about what's going on in the show so first things first you can get a free month and a free audiobook if you go to audibletrial.com slash wild uh deacon's on that harry potter grind yeah what, what book you on uh gobble to fire still nice and there's what two more after that um just totally guessing geez am i on the fourth book i am goblet fire that's no the, no that's wait it philosopher's goes stone the one with the car philosopher's stone chamber of secrets, chamber of secrets prisoner of azkaban no that's not a third one that's the third one's with the snake no it's the second one spoilers uh, and then it goes gobble to fire and then I forgot this the next the Phoenix one, one. I don't know. And then Let's look it up. Deathly Hollow stuff, right? I saw that there's some play or something like that. Yeah. Harry Potter and the Cursed Child. Oh yeah, you're right. Goblet of Fire, The Order of Phoenix, The Half Blood Prince, and then the Deathly Hollows. Yeah. So yeah, been ripping through that. I think this week I'm gonna like be able to smash a bunch of it out. So I'm kind of excited. Nice. But I'm also like been getting into, like all the fishing stuff on like youtube and like looking around uh-huh um because super excited to to go rip down to like niagara falls or something and go fishing <laughs> it's gonna be right sick. off the falls honestly like we're going like above the falls to go fishing yeah apparently there's some dope spots there <laughs> get some bass get some trout it's gonna be sick Is it the salmon that that swim upstream yeah they jump the the river you just see it jumping up the falls Bears snatching them. <laughs> Tourists trying to snatch them. Oh, boy. But, um, yeah. AudibleTrial.com slash wild. Get some of your books going. You can also support the show directly by going to Patreon.com slash The Wilderness Podcast. Our supporter of the week is Brian Latwis. Probably pronounced that last name wrong. Anyways, I, I apologize. But thank you very much for supporting us. We greatly appreciate it. 
yeah, you guys allow us to do continue doing the show. And, you know, if this mic's broken, I might be able to. Might be able to afford to fix it without breaking the bank. Without make having to make some dire financial decisions. Without selling off body parts. Yeah. Lost and I got real old trade band. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. God damn. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much for supporting the show. We do greatly appreciate it. And yeah, now we, we're going to talk about what kind of events we got going on because we have one right now. And this is going to be our final week to get it in. But we have our skill competition. If you don't know what that is. Well, it is not your typical skill competition. It's not anything to do with in-game stuff. You're, we asked you guys to design a skill and email us at, at the, the address, thewildernesspodcast at gmail.com, and really flesh out your skill idea, something that might actually fit into old school RuneScape, and then send it us the email, and we're going to go through it. And then next week, we're going to pick three winners, and each one is going to be getting at least 10 mil. So, yeah, you have your week, so take your time, send it, but, you know, um, try to have it done by, to be safe, have it done by June 16th, I'd say, because sometimes we record Sunday, but sometimes Monday, the odd time Tuesday, depending on how busy we get. Um, but, yeah, if you have it done for Sunday, you should be pretty safe. We've been getting a ton of suggestions right now, and I haven't had a chance to, well, I have had a chance to look at them, but I don't want to fully read them until I get them all in so I can do it all at once. Depending on how much information you guys have sent to us, we might end up doing a, a bonus episode where we go into detail about every single skill. We don't want to spend like two hours doing that on the regular show. But so this way, if it is going to be a longer, you know, discussion of those skills, we can have our own separate episode. But the winners will still be announced on the uh, on the regular episode. Not sure if we're going to do the bonus. Like I said, it depends on how much information is actually within each skill. We may be able to discuss all of it within like 40 minutes or so. Might work out. We're going to play it by ear, though. Yeah, send it to uh, the, the email address, which we're going to give you, as well as all our other contact information. First things first, though, if you want to hang out with us in-game, in our clan chat, it is wildcc. Uh, our email is thewildernesspodcast at gmail.com. Our Facebook is facebook.com slash thewildernesspodcast. And our Twitter is at thewildernessrs. If you want to join our Discord, we have a link on both Twitter and Facebook. Uh, Deegan, you got some stuff. Twitch, Twitter, do you know us? That is right. If you want to check out my Twitch, it's The Dills. Haven't had a chance to do too much streaming, but I do plan on doing those Rune Radio episodes and getting a nice schedule down pretty soon. We're going to have the girlfriend all moved in this week. So this will give me time to actually set out a schedule. It's most likely going to be happening during the week in the evening because I work until 4.30 and I start work at 8.30. Don't think I'll be doing it beforehand. So keep an eye out for that. And our song of the week, when we got that Falador Massacre event on, it says here, June, tw- June 2016, they came out with uh, their own music track for that world, for that event. So we're going to play that. I mean, if it doesn't work, we're going to play something random. But hopefully it, everything, goes as, as, uh, everything goes as planned. So the song of the week is going to be Massacre. And it was composed by Adam Bond. And the yeah. inventor of the old school Bond. We've made that joke before. I'll make <laughs> it again. Brother of uh, James Bond. Mm-hmm. It's an interesting family. All right, guys. Thanks for listening. Tune in next week to episode 137, and we will be talking some skills. That's for sure. Hold on. Wait. wait. One has a license to kill, and one has a license to shill. <laughs> nice. All right. How to get that one out there? Is there a third Bond? I'm sure there is. Probably. We'll find him. All right, guys. Till next week. Keep your eyes out for the third Bond brother. Yeah, have a good one. Bye-bye.